listen, Mona Scott Young is not the devil. Y'all motherfucking heathens are. Let's get into it then. Oh boy. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Do what I said. Don't make me have to beg. Uh. Make sure that I am fed. You know this shit is the best. Yeah. I've been telling all his friends that I am a super freak. I Bitch, am. I'm classy outside, but I hoe up in them sheets. He ain't yeah. never in his life met a woman like me. Better yeah. know it damn right, cause her name is she, she, nigga. So listen, I literally just got fucking done doing this whole, <laughs> what turned out to be a fucking rant video on Big Brother 24, the new season. And, you know, just giving my thoughts and commentary on the cookout and basically how I feel like, you know, all the social justice movements and black culture and just problems and all of that is bringing it down. And since since we're on a tirade already, I'm scrolling through Shade Room, scrolling through Instagram, looking for some new content to do videos about. And I stumbled across this motherfucking post, so I want to bring it up. Let's go ahead and bring this shit the fuck up. So it says, Mona Scott Young did more damage to the black community than crack. Love and hip hop was ridiculous. And I have a problem with that. I'm going to tell you why. I have a problem with that. Because if it's one thing black people going to do, it's trauma bond and avoid accountability. <laughs> if there's one thing y'all niggas going to do, it's trauma bond and avoid accountability. And then call somebody a coon for trying to call you out. Because Mona Scott Young, last time I checked, matter of fact, let's let's actually look it up. Let's actually look it up. Um, let's actually go ahead and look it up. Yeah. Uh huh. Let's go ahead and look it up. Okay, so Mona Scott Young is an American television producer and entrepreneur, okay? She is the CEO of the multimedia entertainment company, Mona Me Productions, best known for producing the VH1 reality television franchise, Love and Hip Hop. Okay, let's go ahead over here. Okay. Um, Scott was born and raised in New York City to Haitian parents, Okay. Um, you know, she did Violator, she did television, she won awards and shit like that. Um, you know, she worked with Missy Elliott. Okay, okay, so you know, she's done a lot of shit. She's done a lot of shit, okay. But yet to her, well, to y'all, I should say, to y'all, Mona is the devil. Like y'all feel like the devil works harder. The devil, y'all feel like the devil works hard, but Mona Scott works harder. And I don't know if I necessarily believe that. I used to be just like y'all. Even when I did my Love and Hip Hop reviews, I would be like, now I'm on the bitch. Okay? And I feel like we all did. Because I know Izbox does it. And I feel like um, A Connection TV, Mona, uh, not Mona. Yeah, Mona Simone does it as well. But we all used to be like, all right now. Come on, Mona. Come on, Mona. You know, even when Mona wasn't involved, we used to be like, Mona, bitch. Come on. Right? But here's the thing. Mona was simply the casting director. Now, did she put bugs in ears? Of course, because as, you know, as, you know, producers and what, whatever the fuck she was at the show, owner, whatever you want to call it, of course, you put bugs in people's ears, you want your show to look a certain way, okay, cool. But nobody told Jocelyn to get up on TV and act a goddamn fool. Nobody told Peter to get up on a goddamn show and have two, three, four, five different fucking wives. Nobody told Peter to move his baby mothers into the same goddamn apartment. Nobody told Peter to get on Instagram the other fucking day flexing with Amina and Tara in the backseat in 2022. You understand what the fuck I'm saying? Nobody told Ray J and Tierra to go through everything that they went through. Nobody told Scrappy to run through Bambi, run through Erica, run through, you know, all of these girls, Pinkett Smith. And nobody told these people to be these people. Take some fucking accountability. Y'all niggas is trash. And Mona Scott just said, you know what? Let me film this. Let me film this. And what do we do for over 10 years? Indulge in this shit. Indulge in it. Because even though loving, like, like, like let's keep it a buck. Loving, loving hip hop has not been a thing pretty much since Jocelyn left, if we being completely honest. And if you want to take it all the way back to the beginning, okay? Because I remember when I was first getting into music, there was this producer named Cito Beats, right? I went over to his um to his studio to uh you know record a song or whatever. And I'm only mentioning it because you know I remember the first scene, the like it was like the first scene of Love and Hip Hop New York, which was like the first introduction to this whole series. Period. They showed, you know, um, what was her name? 
Oh God, not a modern La Negra. But y'all remember the Spanish girl, the Spanish girl, Love and Hip Hop New York. They showed her, um, and it's on the tip of my tongue too. I can't remember it. I cannot remember it. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find um, Samaya. They showed Samaya Reese in his studio and then sleeping right above where I was fucking recording. So I just said that was cute or whatever. But my whole point is, is that the show never really started off being what the fuck it is now. It had drama. It had elements of drama, um, elements of messiness, but it was more so supposed to be about Chrissy and it was more so meant to be like a T.I. and Tiny, right? It was about Chrissy and Jim Jones's love relationship. And then when the network realized it was too boring and they couldn't carry a show by themselves, that's when they made it an ensemble cast. And that's how Love and Hip Hop got started because it was just like, okay, we need more than just y'all two. Y'all bitches are boring. We need an ensemble cast. And season one, it wasn't that bad. Season two is when shit picked up. That's when Tierra joined. That's when Kim Bella joined. That's when Erica Mena was popping in and out. That's when shit started getting crazy and da 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 Love and Hip Hop did not take off all the way until season one of Atlanta when we got to Stevie J, Mimi, Jocelyn, and a goddamn bus. That is what made Love and Hip Hop go viral. That is what took Love and Hip Hop over the top. That is when Love and Hip Hop was most organic. That is when everybody tuned the fuck in because nobody could believe the fucking craziness that we were seeing on goddamn TV because this was all of y'all real motherfucking lives, but we could not believe that we were seeing it on goddamn TV. Mona Scott made nobody do anything. This shit happened because we made it happen. We made it happen. Hence why. Because once Jocelyn left, that's when Love and Hip Hop started to decline. They tried to do the whole family reunion thing with the whole, you know, after the pandemics and all of that. And then it was just like, mm mm, mm mm, mm mm, mm mm. And then we started seeing a rise of the Zeus Network. We saw Jocelyn's cabaret go over there to Zeus Network. That's on the rise. We got Natalie Nunn over there with baddies and bad boys, and that's on the rise. And so it's just like, we can no longer blame Mona because Mona has not been involved with Love and Hip Hop in the last couple of years. She sold over her rights, right? And y'all niggas was still tuned in and watching. And then even now, when we're not watching Love and Hip Hop, now y'all niggas is over there watching the Zeus Network. So it's just like, why do we continually blame Mona when we need to be blaming ourselves? Mona's not making this show trend every week on fucking Twitter. She's not the reason that these episodes are doing numbers. She's not the reason that these motherfuckers are throwing hands. No. Motherfuckers are throwing hands in these episodes because this is how y'all are in real life. Y'all are problematic in real life, ready to pop off in real life over nothing. Okay, dealing with messiness and baby mama drama and all of this fuck shit because this is real life reality. So let's stop blaming Mona and start taking some accountability and saying, hmm, maybe we are what we consume. Maybe because we're consuming trash, maybe we're trash, right? Because we can say all day, oh, we love entertainment and this, that, and the third. But I look at it like this. Once you start vibrating high, higher, you just no longer resonate with certain shit. You just don't. And maybe I'm speaking personally, you know, maybe that's my personal trauma coming out because I did the work and I started vibrating higher and, you know, this low vibrational shit just no longer vibrated with me or matched my frequencies. But now I'm just in a space where it's like, oh no, I'm coming back to commentate on certain shit because I realize there's a lot of people that watch this shit and take it as gospel. Like, you know how many kids grew up off Bad Girls Club and just expect to go everywhere and just fight and pop off for no fucking reason and that's just the way of life? Life doesn't work like that. That doesn't work like that. It does not work like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, y'all place a lot of a lot on Mona when it's just like, no, you really need to place it on yourself because especially if you're raising a child and this is their way of thinking because this is what they've seen in your household because this is all y'all watch and you're not telling them any different. It's like, no. Mona created the show. You kept it going. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're the reason why it was on so long. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I just felt like that was funny. I just really, I just really did feel like that was funny because, I, like I said, I know if it's one thing that the coach want to do, we're going to trauma bond and we just not going to take accountability. We just not going to take accountability, like, by, by whatever means. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just ready for the old decade of reality TV to come back. Um, it's such a shame because the Of Love shows was really a fucking thing for like a good like five, six years. But it stopped being a thing because, you know, they started realizing like after Mega Once a Millionaire, when the guy got on and he had killed his girlfriend and all of that, they realized they wasn't probably doing background checks. And so that's what killed the whole Of Love, you know, type of dating shows. Right. And then that's when we started getting towards basketball wives and this type of reality setup. 
you know, but I miss days like, you know, the reality shows like Hell Date or like MTV Cribs or like Room Raiders and, you know, like just the fun, lighthearted shit. Like, let's get back to that because all of this fighting and kicking ass and throwing shit and throwing bottles in the club, it's over with. It's over. It's done with. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I say this all the fucking time. Does not matter who, because y'all love to give Nene a lot but really the queen of reality television is Tiffany Pollard. That is the one person who literally did not need an ensemble cast to be entertaining. Nene needs a motherfucking cast to be entertaining. Jocelyn Hernandez needs a cast to be entertaining. Erica Mena needs a cast to be entertaining. Evelyn Lozado needs a cast to be entertaining. Omarosa needs a cast to be entertaining. Tiffany Pollard did not need a cast to be entertaining. She was on season one of Flavor of Love, brought back for season two, would have been on season three had she not done her own spinoffs. I love New York. I love New York too. And then had the chance to do I love New York three. Decided to do New York goes to Hollywood and New York goes to work. Like New York was entertaining all on her own. We literally just watched this bitch sit and and, and do random jobs every weekend when she was entertaining. What? Break a leg. Break a leg. Why do I want to break a leg? Break a leg. Okay. Or what about when she was on the next fifteen? The whole inner cry moment, right? And the reason why I'm bringing Tiffany Paula up is because. Ever since her level of success and a way that she bounced from show to show and really stretched out her 15 minutes of fame, it's like everybody that's been on reality TV since her has been chasing her level of success. And it's just like, y'all don't understand. It's not about the blueprint. It's what's embedded in your DNA. You either have that X factor or you don't. We see clear as day. You can be a Nini and you can be entertaining, but that's only when you're in conflict. Give Nini a show on her own. Give Jocelyn a show on her own without the strippers, literally just a show on her own with her and Ballistic or her and her baby. It's not going to be entertaining. Whereas we can literally watch Tiffany Pollard paint a fucking wall and it will be entertaining. But my point is, is that ever since her level of success, every reality show that we've seen afterwards, the women on these shows, the people on these shows have been fighting for her level of success. Even when it comes down to the gay boys with the bad boys club and the bad baddies show. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has been fighting for her level of success. So that's what's in people's minds when they go on to these reality shows. That's what I'm saying. Y'all giving Mona too fucking much. Y'all are giving Mona way too fucking much when you got all of these people that are thinking, let me hurry up and get on TV so I can throw a bottle. I can bust a moment. I can da 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 Right? Because you have Omarosa, who technically was the first. But you have Tiffany, who took the baton and launched it. Then you got Nene, who started around somewhere similar, right? And then, you know, then you had Evelyn. Then you had Erica Mena. Then you had Jocelyn. And it's just like every girl after was trying to one-up the other one. No one ever really being able to outdo Tiffany's success. But you have all of these girls that were known as the it girls of reality TV that set the standard for the ratchet reality TV that we know of today. They are the reason that reality tv is so ratchet they set the standard and so everybody that came onto these shows whether they want to admit it or not that they were trying to be like tivoli pollard then they were trying to be like an evelyn they were trying to be like a jocelyn they were trying to be like a nini they were they nobody was coming on these shows to be like a cynthia nobody was coming on these fucking shows to be a kim Fields. no they was coming to be the top head bitch in charge and create a moment and that meant throwing a bottle exposing somebody's man okay getting caught up in a scandal fighting somebody and that's just because of the standards that were set. So stop blaming Mona. Stop blaming Mona. Because I bet you a million fucking dollars if half the people in the motherfucking comments, and we're going to go back. Let's go ahead and go back to the comments. Because I bet you half these people in the comments, if they was given a check right now, they would probably do it. Hell, they would probably do it for free just for the clout. Okay? Um... Nah, Mona released what she knew y'all was going to watch. If it did that much damage, it wouldn't have lasted longer this long. Let me go ahead and put that back up so y'all can see it. It wouldn't have lasted this longer long. Um, Y'all love toxicity and Mona provided. Oh my God, yes, it was so good. I don't watch it no more. More than crack is crazy. Y'all will say anything not crack. Fact so. She's disastrous and we all got sucked into the hype until we finally peep game. Right, but then... Half of y'all are still watching Zeus. That's the bullshit that I don't understand. Y'all literally just get on social media and just be saying anything. She didn't force them to do anything they didn't want to do, so make it make sense. I second that, right, along with the people that was with it. She's speaking facts with is a lot. Um, Zeus, Mona Scott Young called the Zeus Network, so Zeus Network can run laps. Love and Hip Hop had me running to catch the train so I can make it on time to watch the show at 8 p.m. And y'all loved it and was tuning in. Accountability. Like I said, 
Yes, she did. But when the next season come on, let's not front. Half of those people changed their lives because of that platform they were given. More than put a gun in anyone's head to make them get on TV and act up. They can only edit what you give them. Okay. Okay. Well, and I guess that's what we're in this video. Okay. Because I can listen. If that was the shade room comments that we was going through, I'm sure it would have been a lot more pitiful. Okay. A lot more pitiful responses, but neighborhood talk tends to be a little bit more on a more positive side than the shade room. Still toxic and problematic, but a little bit more positive. So I give them that. Okay. But you know, I mean, it is what it is. And I say what I say. And remember baby, if I didn't say it, then it wasn't said. Okay. So I love each and every one of y'all. Make sure that you comment down below with your opinion as if I give a fuck. Okay. And make sure that you stream my music as if you give a fuck. All right. I love each and every one of y'all. See you in the next one. Bye. Mwah. Is what we're going to go ahead and end this video. Now, remember, if you hated me for that opinion, don't worry, girl. There's a lot more where that came from. Just make sure that you like, you comment, and you subscribe and turn your notifications on. For extended videos and exclusive content, including full episodes of my new weekly podcast, let's start there. Make sure that y'all go ahead and subscribe to patreon.com slash Santana. And also, make sure to try to join the bandit mailing list in the description box so that way y'all hoes never miss a video. Make sure that y'all follow me on Twitter so that we can engage and argue back and forth and, you know, just stay tuned for the hot shit that's coming to you, bitch. Okay? I love y'all. Bye.